Welcome back to the Thinking Crypto Podcast, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. If you are new here, please hit that subscribe button as well as the thumbs up button and leave a comment below. If you're listening on a podcast platform such as Spotify, Apple, or Google, please leave a five-star rating and review. It supports the podcast and it doesn't cost you anything. This content is brought to you by Uphold, which is one of the great cryptocurrency exchanges out there. I've been using them since 2017. They have 10 plus million users, 250 plus cryptocurrencies, and they're available in 150 countries. You can also trade precious metals and equities on this platform. If you'd like to learn more, please visit the link in the description. Well, folks, the big news of the day were the statements from BlackRock CEO Larry Fink. And boy, were they bullish and just incredible. The statements he made on Fox Business with uh, Charles Gasparino and the folks there, uh, I think, once again, just incredible. That's the words that I or word I walk away with, you know, having hear what he had to say. And if you recall back in 2017, and I was here for this, he called Bitcoin an index of money laundering. So this was in October of 2017. It was him and then Jamie Dimon calling Bitcoin a scam. But you know, the game guys, they put out a narrative out there because they're either shorting or they're accumulating. And we know they have been accumulating because BlackRock, of course, filed for a Bitcoin spot ETF. Last year, they partnered with Coinbase to open up crypto custody and trading for their institutional clients. They also launched a private Bitcoin trust. And that was, once again, an internal system for their clients. They also partnered with a Circle, the creator of the stablecoin USDC, where they would be holding the reserves for USDC, which is incredible when you think about it. So BlackRock, they are all in on crypto. And Larry Fink is now going out there saying, yeah, this thing is great. <laughs> And I, I want to play the clip for you, you know, and, and talk about some of the statements he made. So let me go ahead and play this for you. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is um, it is it, it, it's digitizing gold in many yeah. ways. It's a it's a instead of investing in gold as a hedge against inflation, a hedge against the uh, the onerous problems of any one country or or the or the devaluation of your currency, whatever country you're in. Um, let's be clear, Bitcoin is an international asset. It's not based on any one currency. And so it, it, it can represent an asset that people can play like, as an alternative. I would call, the, the foundation of BlackRock is about hope. You invest for retirement because you believe tomorrow is better than today. Wow, incredible statements, folks. You know, he called Bitcoin an international asset. What have I been saying for years? Crypto is a global asset class. You can be in any part of the world, have a smartphone and internet access, and you don't have to be an accredited investor. You can put as little as five bucks in Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP, or whatever asset you want. So it's incredible, right? And it's all in the blockchain. It's verifiable. Uh, you guys all know the attributes. So there's never been anything like that in the history of the world. He also talks about crypto being digital gold. And he's highlighting that it could be a great part of your retirement, right, as a hedge. And he talked about BlackRock is looking to provide hope to investors that, that the future and tomorrow holds great promises and, and, you know, human beings want to be hopeful. And he's, you know, obviously in the context of crypto, which is amazing. So these statements, guys, as mentioned, are incredible, very, very bullish. Folks, this is a CEO of the world's largest asset manager with nine plus trillion dollars of assets under management. This is not some random Joe Schmo. This is not some guy at the street corner holding up a sign, right? We're talking about the whale of whales here. So it's incredible how he has done a 180 um, and, you know, given the statements he made in 2017 and over the years, but now they're coming out and they're saying, yeah, this is great tech and so forth. They've accumulated, they've filled their bags and what they want, BlackRock and all these big banks, they want you to go to them to buy your crypto and they want to custody your crypto. That's the whole game. That's how they weaponize Gary Gensler to go after the crypto startups and custodians and exchanges to kick them out, to shut them down, right? So that the big players like BlackRock could come in and take over. So I think we're seeing all these big players capitulating they can't ignore it right <laughs> it's amazing what is taking place and here michael arrington of uh who i'm a big fan of he's he's one of my heroes um obviously a big time crypto investor the founder of TechCrunch, and much more he tweeted out these simple words and he absolutely is right he retweeted what 
Larry Fink had to say, and he said, they all eventually get it. That's right. They will all eventually capitulate, guys. So Larry Fink's uh, statements are very bullish. You know, he also said they want to democratize crypto. They want to make it uh, cheaper for people to be able to invest in crypto. So I think through their Bitcoin spot ETF, they will be able to do that and uh, much more. And here are some statements he made in 2020 as he was starting to capitulate. In late 2020, Fink said that Bitcoin had caught his attention, even said that there was a possibility that Bitcoin could replace gold. Now, that's a big narrative, folks, because gold has a lot of capital in it as a market. And I think a lot of that could leave gold and go into crypto because of you know the, the attributes of crypto. It includes a lot of what gold has, but it it increases uh, those principles like tenfold, right? With the ability to move it around, uh, the visible, all that jazz. So uh, it's it's amazing. It's amazing, guys. And my hope is that we start to see a Bitcoin spot ETF approved soon. I, I would not like Black Rocks to be approved soon because that would clearly show the game is rigged. I would like those who are in line, you know, before Black Rock to get approved first. But we'll, let's see what happens. Let's see what. Uh, Scumbag regulator Gary Genser has up his sleeve. Now, let's move ahead. Our largest bank in Southeast Asia is adding support for China's CBDC. Folks, the token economy is coming, right? Everything on the blockchain, your fiat currencies, your securities, your commodities, your different assets, tokenization. And, you know, Larry Fink himself has said tokenization is the future of the financial markets. So everything will be tokenized. There will be 24 7 trading, interoperability with different CBDCs and stable coins and currencies and a global global marketplace, guys. Um, so I think we're seeing all of the signs of this token economy and what it's going to encompass. So pretty amazing. Now, uh, here, J.W. Verrett, who I've had on a podcast many times, he weighed in on the SEC's war in crypto. And I'm loving these folks going on the offensive and clearly attacking the SEC, rightfully so. Here's the headline. The Supreme Court could stop the SEC's war on crypto. Neil Gorsuch, Brett Kavanaugh, and Amy Coney Barrett, if I'm saying that right, are among a group on the Supreme Court who may not smile upon the SEC's interpretation of the law. So he talks about Coinbase's lawsuit against the SEC. He talked about also recent landmark cases that curbed uh, executive overreach in the Obama and Biden administrations. The Supreme Court has underscored the importance of major questions doctrine. Uh, this doctrine underlines the crucial point that when agencies attempt to regulate questions of significant national or political importance, they must have explicit authorization from Congress. So it's possible the Supreme Court could step in here you know, this is obviously crucial for the Ripple case as well. Uh, so let's see, could the Supreme Court step in early before we even get rulings in the Ripple lawsuit, Coinbase lawsuits, Grayscale lawsuit? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. But I, I think we're starting to see the tide turn here. A lot of folks are turning on Gary Gensler and the SEC, and that's important. Maybe he resigns uh, you know, later this year. We'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But nevertheless, crypto is here to stay. Uh, there's no stopping it, you know, even though these headwinds we're facing. And I think the U.S. will eventually get it right, but hopefully it's not too uh, late and it doesn't hurt the U.S. moving forward. We'll, we'll have to see what happens. Finally, want to wrap it up here with some news from Corium, which is a great blockchain and project, and they're a partner of the channel. So right now, the Corium team will be at Awesome Wassum, if I'm saying that right, in Berlin. Uh, that is a conference that's taking place. Um, they said here, with an exciting agenda of keynotes, panels, and dedicated smart token workshop, we are eager to connect with like-minded builders around the Cosmos community. So the folks at Corium continue to uh, expand, team up, and form partnerships. Interested in attending, they said, with the team, there are two tickets available for Quorum community members. Simply retweet this post and tag two people in the comments. So uh, if you're interested, if you're going to be in the Berlin area, be sure to check it out. I went to a Quorum event uh, earlier this year in Los Angeles. It was really great. It was great to learn about the project, talk to the founders and, uh, you know, get a, an idea of what the community is about and what they're building. 
So if you'd like to learn more about Corium, guys, link will be in the description. Uh, that's the news. Once again, this BlackRock news is incredible. Uh, that's the word I walk away with after hearing what Larry Fink had to say. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Hit the thumbs up button. Hit the five-star rating uh, on the podcast platforms, and I'll talk to you all later. Thank you.